let's take a look at what's going on. We do have a little bit of good news with Delta. It has weakened. Now it is still a very powerful storm, but that may be a generous maximum wind right now of 130 miles an hour. Hurricane hunters are flying through the storm and they are not finding winds that strong. And in fact, they're actually finding pressures a bit higher. Going with 960 is one of the lowest that they found, but it does look as though the storm has kind of plateaued in strength. Maybe some more weakening will continue as it approaches Cancun. That would be great news. We want to see this as weak as possible. Still a very powerful storm. Don't want to uh, at least let you uh, uh, guard down in that case because this is still a monster of a storm with a category four moving toward uh, Yucatan. You're going to have strong winds, heavy rainfall. The good news if again, if there's any silver lining is that it is still moving at a pretty decent clip west northwest at 16 miles an hour. Big questions will be answered for us or at least we'll start to get some more answers by tomorrow. Once we see one, what the interaction with the Yucatan does Two, there is still some broad circulation from gamma and that may influence the rotation and circulation of the storm. So we'll see what that does and we'll start to get a better idea of that forward speed. Does that forward speed continue once it emerges into the southern Gulf? And then maybe we will start to get a better idea of precisely when it makes that turn. Wasn't surprised to see not much of a change in the hurricane centers track. If there is any bit of a shift, it was maybe a little bit more to the east. That's why I like showing that center line because it really gives you a clear idea of whether or not the hurricane center is actually shifting that track. And at one time, the line was right over the western part of Vermilion Bay. We've seen that kind of get shifted to the east. I mean, a minor shift if that. And again, this is still far from being written in stone. We will see more as the storm gets into the Gulf by tomorrow, midday or afternoon. At the moment, we've got this big upper high, which is helping to push the storm over very warm water. And it's still very warm across much of the Gulf, but not only the surface water, you look beyond the surface and just below the surface. And those temperatures come down quickly in the subsurface. You have deep warm water in the northwestern Caribbean, so not a surprise that it has been intensifying. Actually kind of surprising that it is weakening right now. Something else is going on. Let's see what it does once it gets over that cooler water, especially in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Now, one of the kind of double edged swords is that forward speed. We like to see that forward speed moving very quickly because it's possible that the storm actually moves so far to the west that by the time it starts getting pulled up to the north by this deepening trough, it may be moving more toward Texas or southwest Louisiana. Not that we want that anywhere else, especially for the folks still recovering in Lake Charles, but we do want to see this as far away from us as possible. So a faster forward speed means a higher likelihood of maybe that turn not happening until later. And by then it may be more of a Texas or Southwest Louisiana storm, but also that fast forward motion may also mean that we don't feel the influences or see the influences from that cooler water. Also that upper trough that's going to start lifting it to the north. It is going to start bringing in some drier air that will also be fed into the center of the storm and yet to be seeing what that does with in terms of weakening the storm up to landfall. The Euro model has been trending a little bit more to the west and I've started to see some new runs of the uh, suite of GFS models and they too are starting to shift a little bit more to the west. If I said east with the Euro, I meant west and a little bit more west with the GFS. So maybe we'll see what that trend starts to do once the storm is in the Gulf of Mexico, which again is not until tomorrow. So this is the big question mark. When does it start making that turn toward the north? Right now, it still is kind of highlighting around the Vermilion Bay area. So that's why I said wasn't surprised that we saw the Hurricane Center basically leave the track unchanged. We may see some more changes by tomorrow. So here's what we're expecting. And again, in terms of precise numbers, just it's not there yet because the uncertainty is still there. The coastal flooding, storm surge, certainly winds will be increasing late Thursday, periods of heavy rainfall mainly late Thursday through the day Friday and early Saturday. But also since we're going to be on the eastern side of the storm, we may have a risk of some tornadoes Friday and on into Saturday. We've been under mostly cloudy skies here. Actually, some of the moisture still being drawn northward from what was gamma kept us under mostly cloudy skies. It was definitely a little bit more humid out and you feel it this evening. So a little bit more damp tomorrow. High around 82 degrees. Our rain chances increasing Thursday, windy Friday and early Saturday, but improving conditions by the latter part of the weekend and perhaps a cold front next Tuesday.